Why is the Yakin Institute, a so-called beacon of Islamic conviction, scrambling to hide the truth about its own scholars? Texas is home to the Yakin Institute, a place meant to nurture conviction in Islam, but behind its doors, something strange is happening. Yakin Institute claims to dismantle doubt and nurture conviction, but now some of their own scholars are experiencing anxiety, trauma, and even doubt in Islam. Justin Parrott, once a dedicated part of the team, has blown the lid off the secrets. He wrote a scathing tweet and Facebook post which have now both mysteriously disappeared. But thanks to a subscriber of mine, I was alerted to this post and now have the receipts to show you just how bad these Islamic organizations really are. Today, we're pulling back the curtain on Yakin Institute to reveal the hidden truths they don't want you to see. Let's get into it. Have you heard of Justin Parrott, also known as Abu Amina Elias? He's an intriguing figure in the Islamic community, especially because he's a convert to Islam. Justin has been associated with Yakin Institute, a prominent organization dedicated to Islamic research and education, but something unexpectedly happened that caught everyone's attention. In a heartfelt and in-depth tweet, one that has since been deleted, Justin did something quite rare for a scholar. He openly acknowledged the struggles of ex-Muslims, expressing that he understands why some people leave the faith for reasons that aren't rooted in theology. Justin's admission is particularly striking because scholars rarely discuss these personal and often painful journeys. This goes to show you that sharing our ex-Muslim stories can plant seeds of understanding and compassion. Sometimes, when someone's on the other side of the fence, they'll remember what we said. Justin says that he understands why ex-Muslims leave the faith. Faith alone is not sustainable when the environment becomes toxic. Justin says, and I quote, While I sympathize with those who left Islam because of the cruel and hypocritical behavior of individuals in the communities, I thought it took a measure of strong faith to commit to the truth despite the endless displays of hypocrisy and abuse one might endure. While Justin's sentiments about faith overcoming endless hypocrisy and abuse are heartfelt, the reality is that no relationship should ever consist of endless abuse and hypocrisy. Just as they say love alone is not enough for a relationship to survive, faith alone is not enough either. Justin goes on to explain that he hit rock bottom, describing it as the lowest point one could reach during a dark time in their life. He recounted experiencing online racial abuse at the hands of Muslims. Ironically, Justin is white. We often hear about how white female converts are put on a pedestal, but is it a different dynamic when it comes to white male converts? He delves into a cryptic message about celebrity imams and how they treated him, citing trauma inflicted upon him due to the pressure to meet certain deadlines. Who are these celebrity imams? Well, we can take a guess. He's probably talking about Omar Suleiman, Yasser Qadi, Yasser Bijas, and the others in Texas. This pressure resulted in what he describes as feeling like he was having a heart attack. Yakin promotes mental health awareness, yet they drove their own scholars to hospitalization from anxiety. The irony is palpable. One of the telltale signs about the fallout of Justin and Yakin can be found on Yakin's website. Yakin Institute wiped out his name from all of his articles. They literally kept using his articles, but without his name. This wasn't the end of it. Justin faced severe consequences for speaking out. He wrote, I have caught all of these fraudsters out of my life. And as a consequence, I'm blackballed from the American Muslim scholarly network. My dawa career is over here. No workshops, no lectures, no podcasts. He's calling them fraudsters and complaining about how he's been kicked out of the group and his livelihood is now at stake. Sound familiar? This is exactly what Imam Nick Pelletier went through. Here are some questions we need to ask. Why did Yakin remove Justin's name from his work? What exactly did he say that was so threatening? And why do we keep hearing stories like this from within Islamic organizations? As you can see, the social consequences for involvement with Yakin can come with a lifetime of loss when things go south. 
Being an Islamic scholar is just not a great decision overall. You are subject to the mafia who controls your livelihood and ability to earn. The so-called Islamic scholarly network as he calls it. By being in the spotlight for the good of the ummah, Justin has become a social outcast in the religion and community he willingly joined. If you look at my other video about Imam Nick, he was a Texas Imam as well who became a whistleblower for scandals at a mosque and he left Texas. Spoiler alert, the celebrity Imams, he also called them out, they ignored his pleas to help the children sexually abused at the mosque. Now back to Justin, Justin says that he spiraled in, into one of the worst depressions of his life, just like Imam Nick said. After he was betrayed and exploited for the sake of creating content, he said they wanted to manipulate his writing to push political messages. He then drops a bombshell, saying he understands why Muslims leave their religion for reasons other than theology, meaning they no longer believe in Allah and find holes in the Islamic narrative. He talks about his religious trauma, something he believes many others experience too. Justin wrote, Muslims will endure abuse by their communities, who notice the offensive hypocrisy among leaders and suffer even worse transgressions. Their minds have unconsciously fused Islamic rituals, such as salah, dhikr, recitation, going to the mosque, with traumatic, intrusive memories that haunt them. They cannot listen to the Quran or pray without triggering the painful memories of their traumatic abuse. I have been suffering from the same ailment since my betrayal at the hands of leaders I trusted. I don't have a solution. I don't know how to diffuse these cross neural pathways. But basically, Islam reminds him of the abuse. And now he's struggling because his Islam is connected to the bad treatment he received. And now he's stuck. My wife, who also left Islam, shared her experiences with me. She said, after what I went through, everything became a trigger. When I tried to talk about my feelings, I was dismissed. I was in so much pain, but no one listened. So much hurt and pain was connected to the environment. I started to isolate myself after countless negative incidents, followed by returning back to the community after time away, only to realize nothing had changed, nor will it ever change. I want people to reflect on Justin's tweet, Muslim or not and understand what religious trauma can do to a person. I can relate to Justin that faith simply is not enough to sustain a connection to a perpetually toxic community. How can anyone survive in a community in an environment that preaches one thing but does another? When I started to make connections between the behavior of Muslims and what they said to the Islamic sources, how could I raise a child in that religion? How could I raise a child in a religion that was not only false and flawed in endless ways, but risk her suffering on the way I did? It was time to take my daughter and leave and never look back. In recent times, more whistleblower imams like Justin are stepping forward to reveal the unsettling truths behind some Islamic organizations. Could this be the start of a larger fallout? These brave men are pulling back the curtain on sophisticated dawah organizations, exposing the brewing troubles within. By choosing to speak out publicly, they're risking their reputation and maybe safety to shine a light on the reality many are unaware of. And Justin isn't alone. If you haven't seen Imam Nick Pelletier's videos, it's a must watch. He faced similar challenges when he tried to expose sexual abuse at the mosque, only to be completely blacklisted and kicked out of the community for his efforts. Thankfully, Justin has publicly acknowledged the ex-Muslims have legitimate grievances with the community. This recognition is a beginning for people to begin to see that being part of the Islamic community often comes with significant strings attached. And we've learned that Islamic speakers and writers are frequently controlled by a powerful network of Imams, almost like a mafia. Is this just the tip of the iceberg? Only time will tell. But one thing is clear, the voices of these brave whistleblowers are starting to make a difference. Justin deleted his post, probably because of strong pressure from the community and maybe even cease and desist letters. But we can't let his message go to waste. We got to carry on and share this message with a larger audience so people can see just how bad these toxic Yakin institutes and other institutes are. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, drop a like. Let me know in the comments what you think about it and let Justin know that you appreciate what he did. Also, if you're new here, subscribe and also join the Patreon if you'd like to support the channel and help me to do more such content. Patreon is the best way to support me and it really does help. Thanks for watching. This is your friendly ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir signing out.